Hello guys, welcome back to another one. This was a FIA race at Tokyo, split two, I believe. We're in. Mr. Tessie Smith on the pole. <coughs> a lot of fast guys in this one as well, including fellow YouTuber Mr. Jeff. Who I'm sure you all know. If you don't go check them on out, Adventure Racing on YouTube. And Mr. Demitar in sixth position there as well, Renault Demitar. How did our qualifying go in this one? This was a, a nightmare of a race for us in terms of where we are, we're in tenth. We weren't, um, we weren't even going to do it, but we ended up, we did, we dipped our toes in, just, just for the fun, because there was nothing else to do that night. There's Jeb in 13th, but the car was not competitive here for us, at all. It was a huge fuel saver, and the Sirocco was not good on its top speed. It was actually, actually terrible. I thought when I first seen this round, right, we'll be in an OP car because of the top speed. But the top speed in the Sirocco, it must just reach its top speed pretty damn fast. And that's why it's kind of quick in a straight line on other tracks. But when you have a huge big straight like this, its top speed was terrible compared to some other cars. We couldn't even hang in the slipstream with a Corvette, it just continued to drive away from us, 100 and, 160, 161 mile an hour, top speed, on our own, let's jump on board, as I say, <coughs> a huge fuel saver, this one, let's get all of our options on display so we can see what's going on. <coughs> And you'll see just how hard it was for us in this race, even just to make it without a pit stop. My first three or four practices of this year, I practiced a one stop because it, I was not able to fuel save and make it to the finish. I was losing too much time. I, I, I was getting quicker over all times with doing a one-stop strategy than what I was doing a no-stopper. Unfortunately, we learned very late on that even though our overall time was quicker, as we try to get a wee sniggy spot in the first lap, and we do indeed. Let's go and have a quick look at that. I can remember thinking to myself, that was a wee bit cheeky, but he left it open. And as soon as we seen that, we knew, once we had a nose there, We've been where he is before, and it's very, very hard not to understeer out, in, out into that wall as he did. And we're up in the eighth. But yeah, we realised a wee bit late that even though we were quicker on a one-stop strategy, all of our one-stop strategies, we were in the lead and, and, and there wasn't other people in the room and all on the same level as us. We had a couple we joined. I actually think it was maybe Jeb's lobby who we joined with catfish and stuff. And um, we realised immediately after one race that even it was impossible for us to pass. And you'll see here how much we're struggling as we're going along the street. I'm not 100% sure. How tough it was for other cars to try and and make the end of this one, but the amount that I had to do and there that that hurt us there ever so slightly, slightly as well. As you see, Demitar feeling aggrieved at something there, but we 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 had literally just taken a short shift. And when he pulled over, we're now out of the slipstream because he's pulled over. And um, he's got himself into an incident there as well. He perhaps 
if he wanted revenge. It may have been better until the pit lane arrived and then tried to get his revenge by pushing the guy into the pit lane. And you can see we're having to rev it out now because we're out of the slipstream. And you can see the top speed. I believe other cars are getting up to 167, 168. And they're just walking past us. <clears throat> and you see how much we're left here in terms of the the fuel saving and stuff. Well, we didn't particularly lift much of that lap at all. Trying to stay in that slip. The exit of that corner as well was a bit um it was a killer of a corner for us with front wheel drive struggling with the accident but we're up into the top five that's going pretty darn good for us at the moment really just trying to avoid the penalties and not not get into a race it, it, it sounds so silly but that's my that's my route that I, I choose to to take nine times out of ten we don't want to race we um and that's how we handle this penalty system that the Gran Turismo has given us all at the moment to try to learn and deal with because it's bloody impossible to learn and deal with the penalties at the moment they are getting handed out for all kinds of contact whether it be you nudge into the back of someone, someone nudges into the back of you, you're on the inside, you're on the outside, it just is having penalties out everywhere. So we've had to rev it, rev it out there for a lap, just to stay in this here slip. And we're still, we're still revving the nuts out over. And now, <clears throat> we'll be down into fuel mixture 3, 4, possibly even 5 now. <coughs> as many of the rest of them are no doubt doing as well a wee bit of a gap behind us you'll maybe see this lap how ridiculously early we're having to lift and coast just in order to try and make it to the end of this here race again I feel like they've just missed the mark ever so slightly and look at that for a ridiculous lift before but uh, that's what we had to do in order to make it to the end of the race with no pit stop as Jeff has made his way up behind his night and it's closing in Hanging on to fifth at the moment and still in the slipstream. Mr. Torque out front. And our man on pole, Mr. Smith, in front of us now. He's dropped back to fourth, so it hasn't went the pace for Mr. S Mr. Smith. You see, the whole race we were leaving in sixth gear around there was much faster and better for us if we dropped into fifth on the exit of that corner but again we were told um we were told by other other top splitters about lifting and having a huge big coast on the way into this one to save that fuel as we were struggling we were believing slightly that a no stopper was not possible for us we had not made it to the finish line once we had practiced a no stopper or tried to do a no stopper twice <clears throat> and we the furthest we got was about here that's the closest we got to the line and again we're we're down in fuel mixture three or four now here at the moment no interest whatsoever in trying to pass anybody at all but Jeff definitely has a wee bit of fuel <clears throat> and he's looking right off and another chance for us to have a nice big lift and a bit of saving as Jeff makes his way up into the top 5 a good round 
Yes, for Jeff, I think. <clears throat> or at the very least, a very good race for him in this one. Up into the top five, and I think he qualified it outside the top ten. He was behind us by three or four spots at the start of this one. <clears throat> Still a load of guys behind us. And we'll continue watching this one rather than go for any skips. As it was a fun, enjoyable one. <clears throat> Again, with a nice big left and coast on the way into the braking areas. Trying to eke out every bit of the fuel that we could. <coughs> and already we're probably in mixture two, mixture three. I think we couldn't really go any any lower than mixture three for most of it. Otherwise we weren't able to hang in the slipstream. But on a few laps, it was obvious that other people were in mixture six, and rather than go for the pass, we just went down into mixture mixture six ourselves. As Mr. Parbill is a man on the move, and we almost got caught out there by Mike. Luckily, we didn't even realise during the race. We'll have another look at that. That Mike was coming. We were actually on our way back over there. So very very lucky you can see as, as we just start to come over and follow his slip stream we would just catch Mike at the last moment not paying attention to a radar and Mike is going for the old Grand Turismo 4 for the price of one seal. Oh but he's, he's got four and he lost four and bit of contact on the inside there see Mr Bill. And trying to throw one up in, say to Jav, and three will not fit there. Jav lucky not to be affected there too much. And Mr. Bill falls back behind us. We're still in the top seven, which is a great result for us. <coughs> Considering how poor the car was in this round, as I say, I, uh, I don't feel like this was a competitive car at this track even in qualifying usually in qualifying that's the one thing that the Serapo is usually pretty good at but even in, in qualifying here it, it was slow we kind of knew that we weren't going to qualify at the front we would have had to get extremely lucky in fact we did get lucky in qualifying because we had a slipstream for virtually the whole lap I believe and and still it was a personal best lap time for us but still just not good enough compared to the other cars As Mr Bill we could not wait to give it to Mr Bill there because Mr Bill is hungry for a pass you can tell that he's a man on the move So we've quite politely asked him to climb aboard the rocket launcher that we carry in the passenger seat. And we've pointed him directly ahead of us. He is now our very own secret weapon. Is he a weapon of mass destruction, I wonder? Is he going to call mayhem in this one? <coughs> Again, we're in three here and we're not particularly worried that they're edging away here. We're saving the fuel, getting the fuel under control. And these guys all have to filter in and go around this here. So we were never really panicking there about dropping out of the slipstream towards the end of the street there. We knew that we were all going to slow each other down again at the herping. 
and back in the slipstream once again, 8th position, at the moment lap 6 of 9. Again, short shifting as and when we can. And he obviously did have a go at this race. There's not usually many people in, enjoy a fuel saving race. I've had a couple of fuel saving races which I have enjoyed. But they've only been a wee bit of fuel saving. This amount of fuel saving was absolutely ridiculous. You had guys driving about slowly on badness, the amount of lifting and coasting that you had to do, like even there, you're just, it was like the guy who was slightly behind was always wanting just to rev it that wee bit extra and make a pass and then as soon as he made a pass he was straight back in the fuel saving mode, so there was a lot of chopping and changing of the positions in this one because of the fuel. And yet again, I believe here, <coughs> we'll be able to go right down into the leanest fuel mixture. Which was telling us that, okay, these other guys are also in mixture 5 or 6. And again, just leaving it in that lean mixture, getting the fuel under control because we know that they all have to go around the urban single file usually and they all slow each other down yet again and Dave has, has picked up a penalty there a one second penalty is going to hurt him although I have to say I wish the penalty zone on, on this track was on the straight because it, it wasn't a punishing penalty zone at all I'm not sure how other other guys feel about penalty zones but I would prefer the more harsher the penalty zone the better for me it encourages people to avoid those penalties as much as they can the penalty zone on this track allowed you not really to lose anything more than your penalty maybe a wee bit more you see Jeff there, he's, we're coming around to the penalty zone now. If Jeff's one second penalty had have hit him in the middle of the street or, uh, or just off of the finish line or something, it would have lost him much, much more time. But because of the breaking zone shortly after this penalty, you see it doesn't affect you hugely you kind of serve what you got <clears throat> you have maybe losing one and a half seconds there but as I say if the penalty zone was here that one second penalty quite easily could have lost you minimum of three seconds easily and again we're quite happy to stay in the lean mixture here and let Jeff have it any time he wants it. Jeff was holy ass here and he seemed to not be struggling anything like we were with the fuel. He seemed to have that, that extra bit of fuel to rev it out. You can see how, how ridiculous we're still having to lift and coast. I think it was only halfway around the last lap, perhaps heading up to the last corner of the last lap even, whenever we started to think to yourselves okay well we've got enough we've got enough fuel we're willing to stay in that very fast fuel mixture the whole way to the finish line and hope and cross our fingers that other people started running out of fuel that big run where your reflexes have to be on edge just in case the car in front of you runs out of fuel and slows down <clears throat> you can see still we're taking big lifts staying in 6th gear around this we haven't had a 5th gear in that chicane once the whole race and 5th gear was much much better like in, in qualifying 
people had no interest in using a, a sixth gear around that chicane because of the drive on the way out and a cane lifting a ridiculous half a mile before the corner and a two second penalty handed out just up ahead of us we haven't done too bad so far avoiding the mayhem and the penalties hopefully on the last lap it's not going to come back and catch us out and there's still a big queue of cars in front of us all hope is not lost just yet Mr. ZKP19 also behind us and the run that he gets on us here oh, look at the speed just walks past us with no problems and another ridiculous big lift but it's all it's all getting a bit spicy in front of us we taps here and taps there and another penalty handed out this time going to Mr. Parbill so we've got two penalties um, Mike has a, a big five second penalty we were absolutely terrified here on this last lap we were thinking to ourselves oh my goodness these two are having an argument and they're gonna they're gonna get us caught up in their argument and I think it was around about here where I started to think to myself I've got enough fuel I can rev it out the rest of the way and for the first time in the race we'll take a fifth gear around the chicane and we just managed to avoid him and we were very nervous here passing Mr. Bell as well in case he tried anything silly but he didn't and over up to seventh with enough fuel to rev it out the whole way home to the finish line w would there be anybody else run out of fuel on the way to the line that's what we were hoping for I suppose the result was slightly better than I even remember watching it back now there's one two three four five cars directly in front of us so th that must be second or third place just on up the road there it is indeed second place the leader over the line now so those guys were in second but nobody did run out of fuel that day it was a seventh place very enjoyable race but catches in the next one